Hey guys, Yvette Sinamo here, and um, <clears throat> I've been new little fun little project, a little um, rustic kind of yummy little mini journal that I want to do today. And what inspired me to do this is I've got all these little pieces of scrap paper that I've been saving that I cut from various other journals. So I thought I'm going to pull them out and I want to use them to create and some have like I've used uh, underneath my surfaces so they're kind of dirty and I'm okay with that. But what I'm going to do is um, it's just going to be really rustic and yummy and I'm going to use like all these little pieces that I've cut um, and maybe I was like some of them are all wrinkly too and they've got paint or pieces of paper glued to them and I'm just leaving it like that. I also grabbed a couple coffee filters that I've tea dyed and then I've got some eco dyed paper here and <laughs> so I had this you know when you're buying of course all your little crafting and journal goodies you got these little tags and I was looking at it and I was inspired by it because I thought oh it, you know I could stack a bunch of papers and use this as kind of like a binding and then I'll just use some jute to tie it together so that's what I'm doing today so it's not going to be the kind of journal where you're going to have like a front and a back cover. I am going to use a stiffer um, piece for the back just because I want support and this is a scrap that I had. I'm just going to tear off because I want to use that. Oh, this, this doesn't want to tear very well, does it? That's okay. Um, so I want to cut a piece to kind of support the bag and I am just eyeballing things it's going to be all different like sizes all the papers are different sizes and textures so I'm just gonna kind of start looking at my scraps and fitting pieces of papers in I want to use these kind of yummy things too that pull out so, just trying to figure out how I'll lay that in. I think I wanted to use this one as the top because I wanted it to kind of, I don't know, I might have to add a few folds. I think, okay, let me just, let's just start by putting some papers in. So, get a collection of paper, and at first I was going to turn this inside out and use that, but you know what? I kind of like this. It's Miss Sparkles & Co. Papier Paper Sacks and Jewel. Eight bags, four of each. And I thought that was kind of cute. Okay, so let me, let me do this again. Get some papers in here. They're different lengths. They're different textures. And I'll cut some just because they might be a little too long. So I'm not making this book any particular length, like I didn't plan on a length. I just want the paper to kind of talk to me, you know? You know how that goes, right? I've got some really nice pearlescent paper, some that's torn like so. I think I want to get another black piece in there. To kind of go over top so it's kind of like a junk you know junky journal you know what I totally forgot about my echo dyed papers here and I'm still recovering from a cold so I'm a little nasally I apologize so I'm just gonna kind of tear some of these papers down to size to different sizes because I want to use them See what else I've got in here. I really like this. Okay, let's see. So 
So if we've got that in there and that, and I've got all my papers underneath, so you probably can't see. Wow, I am a mess today. <laughs> okay, let's move some of these for you. This is quite nice too. Let me tear this down. There's glue on it. There's um, uh, stain on it, and I like that. I also want to use some of these coffee filters and just gonna try to figure out how to use them in my journal. I think I will just kind of trim them a bit so I can stick them in this way like a sheet. edge this is a little too big and crisp so let me just narrow this one down a bit a little jagged edge so cute okay I've got another piece here that I think I'll just tuck in between and I'm just filling up these pages. This might be nice right at the front. If I can put that there and attach this, I really have like an idea to put this in the front like this somehow. But I think I have to extend the fold. Okay, I've got a long piece here that I want to get in, but in order to do that, I have to do a couple more folds so I'm just going to do a little bit of an accordion and you can fold it any way you want in out okay so then that way when it's in we could just pull it out that way. Wait, how was this? Like that. Okay. So I can stick that in there. And then definitely want to use more of this eco dyed paper and some more coffee stained. Um, Filters. Maybe I'll cut it this way. That'll be a little different just to get, you know, different shapes in there. How interesting is that? So it's getting there. I'm just stacking some papers. Um, I'm going to take that out for now because I'm not too, I think it's got a little too much wasn't really what I was planning so it's okay if you you know put some in take some out just get your little collection of goodies in there and then once you have all the papers that you'd like to use You can, we can get everything binded or bound, bound up. Okay, let's see. Now I'm rethinking this again. I don't know if I want that stitching there or that. Well, I think I'm going to leave that there. Okay, cute little junk journals come along. Um, I 
think I'm going to incorporate these. Now these are uh, coffee filters. They're kind of the V-shaped ones, and I had some left over. My gosh, I haven't used a coffee pot that uses these filters. No wonder they were hanging around in my pantry. But I thought, oh, I'll just stain them, and I'll use them in my art. So they're coming in handy. I'm just going to fold them up so I can make a little pocket. And I have several little pockets here. Whoops. And then when that goes in, we could stitch it in the book, and it makes for a cute little um, add-on. And I think what I might do is, here's a perfect opportunity, I don't know, I just had this idea, where instead of gluing it, I just want to like hole punch it and tie a piece of... rope to secure it how cute would that be or you can sew it just this will complement the binding I use jute a lot in my art and in my journals, I just, I love it. I love the texture, I love the rawness of it. And then if I have it like so, and there's something about this that's bothering me, it's a little too fat and too clean. So let's see if I can tear a bit off. Whoops, make it a little less obvious. And isn't that cute? I'm going to leave that as the front. Now the back, again, it's just not raw enough. So I'm going to probably use a little bit of my wax to age it up here. And I'll use my, which one is this, aged brass just because it's just looking too clean and crisp and I want it to be rustic and yummy. And then I think I'm going to also just do, a, because it is my back cover, I just want to do a little bit of collaging. Nothing crazy. Just pick some little pieces to add something interesting. I've got my mystique turquoise here that I'll just kind of do the edges so that it pops out of this a bit. Isn't that pretty? And then if I just glue that on, nope, that stick is done. Just get a little glue on here, and then it just seems like the back cover will be a lot more fitting to tie in the rest of the book just by sticking a little piece of eco dyed paper and then it's not so clean, you know? Just like that. And then you can always add a little something else too. Let's see. I think what I might do is, that's an idea, on the back here, I'm going to glue this on. 
and then it will tie in the front a little more. So I'm just going to glue that on like so. And then I'll just fold these in. There's no point in cutting it. And it'll add a little bit more reinforcement too to the binding. Or sorry, to the edge of the book. Okay. I like that. I like how this is looking now. There we go. Isn't that cute? So that's the back. And then have this at the front. And I think what I'll do just so that this isn't so obvious, is add a little aging to this part so that the letters aren't so obvious. And kind of cover the, the lettering a bit. I like that S. I just kind of want to there make it a little less obvious, a little more ambiguous. And I think I'll just tear a little. Let's see what I've got over here. Just Maybe a little section here and glue that on. And just for some reinforcement, I'll just fold it over. Add some more glue. This is going to be the spine of the book. So, I just add a little something. So we're gonna bind the book this way, the little journal. And that looks a little more cohesive. So cute. Kind of reminds me of like Native American. This really reminds me of a teepee. The way it's folded and they usually have stitching up the top. Okay, so I think I have enough pages in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap it. Oh, there was one, okay, I really wanted to get this piece in here. So I think what I'll do, just trying to figure out a fold, because it's already folded. Uh, if I've got it in there, I'm just gonna do like a little fan fold in the middle. So I'm gonna fold once in the center section and then again one more time, just this way. Oops. And I don't know why I want this piece of paper in there so badly, but I just do. <laughs> So I've got a little bit of a fan, so it'll tuck in there. And let's see, where am I gonna have it? Do I wanna put it there? Nope. I'm gonna tuck her in the back, I think, somewhere. Cause there's a lot of, there we go. Okay. And what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna do a couple folds in here to make pockets. So some of them won't end up being so, like especially these straight ones, and I'll show you after I'm done, but let's just make sure all the pages are down at the bottom. Uh, sorry, I'm just checking here for something. I guess I don't have it in my reach but I know I have homemade paper that my girlfriend made me hang on it's really cute in there
Okay, so my girlfriend Robin McClendon at Rarebird, she's over here on YouTube too. She makes all these little homemade papers, and I thought, oh, be really nice to put some of that in. And then she also gave me this, these Asian papers on rice paper, and. don't think I'll use these ones in there, but I definitely want to use some of her homemade papers. Because these are really nice. They'll go in perfectly. Especially this one. And what I might do is stick it right in behind this. So that when I have the cover in, that'll look really nice peeping, peeking through. And then I'm just going to shove some of these other ones in the middle where it's not as exciting there and I think that's all I'm going to use for now because I don't want to use all of it I'll put two pieces in there okay so make sure everything's stacked up I've got a nice combination of a variety of different textures and surfaces. And then I've got my little binding here. And I was going to use jute to bind it, but, well, we'll see if I can still accomplish that. What I was worried about is, um, it's kind of thick. So, so I'm just clamping the outside here. I'm going to get an old book. I was going to hole punch it, but it's gotten pretty thick. So I'm going to have to use um, my awl, and I'm just going to put two holes. It's going to be a simple little stitch, and I'm just pressing down. I'm going to try and get right through. I need a big enough hole in there to get the jute in there because I am not using a needle. Okay, so get a nice big hole. And then I'm going to get one on the other side. Just eyeballing it. And let me just go on the other side too. And hopefully I can get my jute through this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wax the end a bit so it doesn't fray. There we go. That's definitely going to help a bit. Okay. So keep a nice long piece of jute so that, you know, you don't want to cut a piece too short. I haven't even cut this one yet. Okay, so the first one went in pretty good. This one wants to be a little stubborn. You definitely have to have patience. But luckily, we're just doing two holes. You might have to give it a little push. Poke it through. You have a skewer here. Just going to help it through. it's threading okay so what I'm gonna let me just start again I'm gonna cut it add a little more wax and see if this will 
help. Yeah, that definitely helps. So make sure you have a long enough piece so that you can cut it. When you cut it fresh, it, it won't fray on you. Okay. And then at this point, we will just, let me just cut this. You can tie it securely. Left over right. Right over left. And then you can undo that. You can tie the top as you choose. If you want to do a bow, you can do a bow. If you want to do it, um, leave it just rustic, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut it and I'm just going to like fray the end of it. Cut it as short or long as you like. Get a couple pieces here. And then you've got this cute little art journal. Like so, with these different papers and textures. And then what I'm going to do inside is do a couple different pockets. So I'm just going to fold these back. Like these clean edges that I don't particularly like. I'm just going to fold them in to make pockets. And then, of course, I'll do some kind of art to uh, kind of rust, rustic it up a bit. But what I want to do is I'm going to just stitch it because I want to keep that same kind of look throughout. So I'm going to use some of my jute here. And... a little knot and then that'll hang up the side isn't that cute I'll leave that and then on the other side you can do the same thing or you can just glue it I think on this side I'm just gonna do let's see um, I'll just do one, one stitch in the corner and then oops, tie one thread and this adds and I'm tying it on the outside here so it sticks out, but it adds all kinds of nice little yummy goodness hanging out of your journal. And then it gets you excited getting to that next page. Uh, another thing that you can do is, um, let me do another one here. Because instead of using jute, Get yourself uh, some of your waxed linen. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Okay. So get that. We've got some threads, some linen, different colors. Grab a needle. Okay. 
and you don't even need to use your awl or anything here, but just do some stitching along the side. Just for something different, you can do, I think I'll just go around the outside like this. Okay. But it's a nice way to add, you know, other textural components. And then you could go back through the same holes here just to kind of crisscross it. And then when I get to the end, just tie a little knot. Cut the string. Then you've got, you know, more components hanging out here once it's done. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Hopefully I have enough here. I'll do a bigger stitch. And just experiment with a variety of stitches, you know. And then at the same time, you're creating these cute little pockets. And then I'm just going to pull it out here and tie it. Leave these little strings. Doesn't this remind you of a little Native American journal? I know I said it before, but so then you can go ahead and, and you know, working it and do little things to your pages just to make them a little more interesting and unique. Um, I'm going to do a, a number of other little uh, pockets. I'm going to use coffee filters here and I'm going to stitch along. So I've got little tuck spots here. Um, I'll do one more for you so you can see. I'm just going to, I'm going to clip these pages down so I'm not fussing with them. And I'm going to put a clip over here as well. And I'll show you, whoops, I guess I need that page. But this is the beauty about having all these little scraps is just, you know, go through, grab what you've got and, um, just, you know, play, stitch, cut holes, tie knots, use different threads, different materials, different colors. Did I use this color? Let's see what else I've got. I've got a cream one here, but I really want that stitch to show up. So let's see, this one's a little bit darker. Nope. Maybe I'll use black on this one. Okay. So I'm going to qu cut quite a bit because I don't want to run out. Thread this sucker. I was out with a cold for about a week and I've already recorded three videos today so <laughs> I feel like I'm running out of steam I feel fine and I'm, 
you know, but I could tell in like my voice and my lack of enthusiasm, even though it's there, might not be hearing it in my voice, <laughs> but I assure you, I am fully involved here and invested in you guys. Okay, so let's see. Whoop. I want this little guy over here. And I think I want, I'm always thinking about where I want the end stitch to be. And I think I want it hanging off like the top here. So let me just get a little clip to clip this guy for a moment. So I'm going to start over here. Wherever I start is where I'm going to end so those little tags are going to hang out. And, whoops, just going to again do the kind of crisscross, I like to call it a shoelace stitch. And I'm just, you know, freeforming it, freehand sewing because I want it to be rustic and authentic and I think that's why it kind of reminds me of Native American and when I was in university doing my degree in fine arts I actually took a Native American arts and crafts class which was fascinating so I did learn a lot of um, stitching techniques using leather and beads and um, we made a variety of, of different functional objects, like little sashes, and we made baskets, and it was such a fascinating, fun class. I really enjoyed it, and to be honest, I haven't, you know, really used the materials or experimented much since then in those crafts that I learned, um, but... You know, when I start doing this thing, it is reminiscent of a lot of the things I learned. So, in a way, I guess subconsciously, I am still kind of tackling that knowledge that I learned. Whoops. Hey, guys. Sorry about that. My camera went flip. <laughs> okay. And another thing you can do is just if you just want the single stitch is you can um, down here just tie a knot and you, you would, you know, literally just, whoa, I'm not getting all tangled up here. You would just end here with another knot or a tie, but I do want to continue and just complete the cross stitch. I'll do different stitches um, on some of the other pages. But for now, I'm just going to do this one. My little Keeley stitch. This is really fun and actually now that I think of it, so every other year we end up going up to Canada because that's where my immediate family still lives. And um, we go up to a little town or a little city up on the north shore of Lake Superior called Thunder Bay. And there is this wonderful um, heritage community called Old Fort William and we love going there we love taking the kids there every summer takes you really takes you back in time to um, where the French were trading with the Europeans 
and um, they would come down that St. Lawrence River and enter into Lake Superior and go up, um, I think it's the Niebing River that goes up to Kekabeka and it's right on um, the river there, but it's fun. You can go canoeing in the old canoes and they've got all their furs from back in the day. The Native Americans are outside with their teepees and they do the traditional bread that they um, fry on the open fire called banana, which is interestingly enough so much like um, traditional Jamaican bakes or St. Lucian bakes I meant to say my husband's from St. Lucia and so there we do a lot of traditional foods and one of uh, our favorites is bakes and we do it in just around the holidays like Christmas and stuff because it literally is like a deep fried bagel but it's so delicious but it tastes exactly like banana so when we took the kids up there and we had Banna for the first time, we were so excited that, um, you know, they share kind of the same recipe. There's a lot of cultural similarities. But anyways, my whole point was that I, every time we go, I collect all kinds of little memorabilia and information from the old fort that I've been planning to do a little art journal with, and I just haven't yet. So I think I am going to use this little journal to do that with it. It's perfect, but look at how, isn't that nice how all these little stitchings show and you just get this cute little journal um, and you can see all the little yummy goodness in there and I can't wait to start working in it. I'll be sure to post little updates to show you the things that I've put in this journal and you can have it any way. You can have it pocketbook style or, you know, like a portfolio style here. It's up to you. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to make this cute little rustic um, junk journal with all your little scraps. Just incorporating different types of papers and materials. And you can really turn it into anything that you want. Even those nice clean crisp pages you can make pockets or folds and just make it into yummy goodness we got all kinds of little things that you can you know stick little memorabilia and stuff and I have all these little papers and tickets and seeds from the farm from the old fort so I'm gonna just load up this journal with all kinds of cute things Anyways, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.